Hi everyone, I'm Heidi Viegas. I blog over at HealingHarvestHomestead.com and I talk a lot about self-reliance skills and homesteading and a large part of that is herbal medicine, um, using plants for your health. <clears throat> so today I thought I would talk with you a little bit about how to make a stuffy nose remedy and allergy season is right behind the corner or right around the corner so it's time to get started on that if you want to experiment with this. It only takes two herbs. Um, one of the herbs is mullein. Mullein is a, a weed in a lot of places. It grows in disturbed soils and, and things and it's got really large leaves. <clears throat> These leaves have little hairs on them, so just know that when you pick them, they might irritate your skin a little bit, but they're not dangerous. This is a very, very safe plant. And you wanna pick the leaves of the plants in the second year so as not to damage them. Um, and you can tell that it's the second year because they will have a stalk growing up out of the center. They grow in a rosette pattern. And there'll be little yellow flowers on them come June and July, and they're really good for ear infections. Anyhow, this is all about stuffy noses. We won't even go there. The other herb that we're going to talk about is mallow. This is common mallow. A lot of you know it is cheese weed, and you can use this, but the medicinal form is marshmallow. It's very, very fluffy and mucilaginous. That's this herb here. The mullein I just dried and crushed up, and that's this one. Um, but I bought my marshmallow from Star West, organic, of course. And the way, the way these herbs work together is so cool, okay? Um, mullein happens to be excellent for your entire bronchial system. So um, it's, a, it's an anti-inflammatory. Uh, what that means is that is when it comes to stuffy noses and congestions, usually your sinuses are all inflamed. Um, so the mullein helps calm that down. It's also astringent, so that means that it's going to tighten and tone those mucous membranes as well. And then the other factor that helps mullein be a great herb for this tincture is that it's anti-catarrhal. And that means that it helps break up the mucus um, that's, you know, that sticky gooey mucus you get when you when you're have a bad cold or when you're all stuffed up with your allergies. Um, it helps with that and it also helps with the post-nasal drip in the runny nose. <clears throat> it's just an overall soothing combination. The marshmallow is extremely demulcent and that means that it's soothing. It's anti-inflammatory and it's very, very soothing to swollen membranes. So between the two, they just help your head feel so much better. Um, it's nature's decongestant, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, it doesn't feel exactly the same as taking a drying decongestant over the counter, but you can feel the healing in your head when you use this. And um, for me, speaking from my own personal allergic allergy self for many, many years, this was a lifesaver. And now I have to say, after using this tincture for about six years, I rarely have to use it. I haven't, I've rarely had to use it for about two years now because my allergies seem to have healed right up. Anyhow, let's go on to how to do this. So what you wanna do is you wanna get your herbs and you wanna crush them so that they're, you know, fairly small. And then I use one part mullein and one part marshmallow in a jar. I fill it about halfway full. Get your vodka. <clears throat> vodka is 80 proof alcohol. I like to use vodka because it's clear. I can see the color of the tincture as it, as it processes. And also, um, it doesn't taste like much, so you can actually taste the herb, the plant matter in it. And I think that's important. Um, once you start working with herbs, you can tell a lot by the taste. And the taste of an herb is extremely um, important and it tells you a lot about what that herb is doing for you. Okay, so I'm filling up my jar of alcohol. <clears throat> At this point, you'd put a lid on it, which <laughs> I don't have with me right now. You'd shake it up really well and then wait to the herbs. These herbs are fluffy and large, so they're gonna soak in some of the alcohol. At that point, you may need to add a little more vodka. It's likely you won't. You fill it up to about one inch from the top. And then after I shake this, I like to place mine in a sunny window because I feel like the sun adds so much to the, um, the herbal mixture. Um, some herbalists like to put their tinctures in a 
cool dark cupboard and that's fine too. I, I kind of like them out where I can see them. Then I'm re reminded to shake them. You want to shake them because that helps keep the plant matter moving around in the solvent, which is the vodka. Okay. Now, after it sits and after being shaken for four to six weeks, I know that seems like a long time, but it goes fast, you're going to strain it off. And to strain it off, I don't have any that's unstrained, but I'm just going to show you. I simply use a strainer and a Pyrex measuring pitcher, and I strain the herb into the um, <clears throat> strainer, and the liquid goes right through perfectly fine. Um, I have articles on my website that you can actually read about this and see pictures of too. Um, and then I bottle it up. So this is a bottle of, I call it breathe tincture <laughs> for just because it helped me breathe for so long, but it's mullein and marshmallow. And you can see how dark it is after a period of time. It's really pretty amazing. Um, and then we've just been using this over over time. And the way you want to put it in, uh, you the best way to use it is with a little amber glass bottle like this. These have a little dropper, okay? And, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a one ounce or a two ounce or a four ounce size, the dropper tends to be pretty standardized and hold about the same amount of tincture. And you're probably wondering, well, how much do you use? Well, first of all, let's talk about how to get it in there. I use a little tiny funnel like this, and I pour some of the tincture into a smaller measuring um, cup, and then I just gently pour it right into the little funnel until my little jar is filled. <clears throat> okay, now on to how much to use. So for an adult, a full dose is generally, for most herbs, three droppers full, and that's what I suggest for this tincture. So three of them look like this. So one, all the way as full as you can. That's about how far it goes up the little dropper, two and three. And if you're wondering how much that is, that's approximately a half of a teaspoon, which isn't very much. Okay, so if you're wondering about all the alcohol you're going to be consuming, you're, you're not. this is not a cocktail, okay? It's a half a teaspoon. The way you want it to work is you drop the droppers full under your tongue, Okay. Okay. You hold it there for you know, a few seconds. The reason I like to do that is because the alcohol helps the herbal chemicals get right into your body and start working right away, even in your mouth. So three droppers full. This is, these are very safe herbs. I have done a lot of research on them and I have not come across any contraindications uh, at all but they are excellent for your bronchial system. Um, I had a friend ask me, well, how often can you use it? I, myself, use it throughout the day. If you're suffering from acute symptoms, like you're just like, your head is swollen, you're crazy, it's really awful, then I would use a smaller amount, a drop, maybe two dropper fulls, not a drop, but a dropper full, um, you know, several times throughout the day. Um, if you're just wanting to keep things at bay, then I would just maybe use it once or twice or as needed. Um, children can use this. Um, for a 12-year-old child, I, you know, if they're like pretty much adult size, you can give them the same amount. Um, and the younger they get, you just want to keep cutting the doses in half. So for a six-year-old, a 12-year-old, about half of the amount and so on. And you can find out more about dosing on my website too just general guidelines is all it is. Okay, I'm Heidi. I blog over at Healing Harvest Homestead, and I hope you give this tincture a try for allergy season. If you get it started right now, it'll be ready just in time for March. <laughs> Again, four to six weeks, you're gonna have it already. And it's a quick, easy uh, home remedy that you can carry with you in your purse, which I used to do when I had really bad allergies. All right, um, message me if you have uh, comments or questions, and I'm going to try to start doing more of these videos for you. I'm just learning, so bear with me, and I will see you soon.